Hello and welcome to another episode of Learn SQL. In today's video, I will discuss how to create a primary key in SQL Server. I will also discuss two options for generating unique values for each row to get a primary key in a table. We will explore identity and unique identifier to automatically populate the primary key column. So let's take a look at what these things are. Firstly, what is a primary key? A primary key is used to uniquely identify each row or record in a database table. It means that each row can be identified uniquely and a primary key cannot have a null value. Now, what is identity? There is a property called identity that is used to create an identity column in a table. This property is used with the create table and alter table transact SQL statements. So what is a unique identifier in SQL server? The globally unique identifier data type in SQL server is represented by the unique identifier data type which stores a 16 byte binary value. A GUID is a binary number and its main use is as an identifier that must be unique in a network with many computers at many sites. GUIDs can be generated by calling the transact SQL new ID function and are guaranteed to be unique throughout the database. These concepts will help us create the desired primary key in our table. But regarding the identity column, it's important to note that it is essentially a numeric column that remains unique only within the table. To illustrate this, we can create two tables and observe that the identity numbers may repeat if you have multiple tables. Unique identifiers, on the other hand, will not repeat even in the second table and they will remain unique across the entire database. Let's take a closer look at the identity columns definition and syntax. In SQL Server, an identity column is a column that automatically generates a unique numeric value for each row inserted into a table. This identity column is often used as a primary key to ensure the uniqueness of rows. The identity column is characterized by auto-incrementing values, which means that each new entry increments the value. Each time a new row is inserted into the table in SQL Server, it will automatically generate and assign a unique integer value to the identity column. In most cases, this value is incremented by one from the previous row. So that's how the identity column works. Regarding data types, it can be of type int, big int, small int, or tiny int depending on the specific need. Primary key identity columns are often used as primary keys for tables. In this way, each row in the table has an identifier that is unique which is crucial to maintaining data integrity. Syntax, you can define an identity column when creating a table using the identity keyword. Here's an example of how to create a table with an identity column. Create table and test. Employee ID int identity one comma one primary key comma. Name var car 50. Now let's talk about the unique identifier in SQL Server. A unique identifier is a data type that stores a globally unique identifier or universally unique identifier. This data type is represented by a unique identifier and we generate unique identifiers using the new ID function. These values are 36 character strings consisting of numbers and letters. Unique identifiers guarantee uniqueness across the system and database, making them ideal for ensuring uniqueness. The unique identifier data type stores GUIDs or UUIDs, which are 16 byte 128 bit binary values. Here's the syntax for creating a table with a unique identifier as a primary key. Create table and test. Employee unique identifier primary key comma. Name var card 255. To insert data into a table with a unique identifier, one can use the new ID function. This function generates a new random unique identifier value each time it's called. Example, insert into emp test id comma name, values new id function comma omit. So the new id function can generate a random unique identifier. We need to try some examples of primary key generation using identity and new id functions. In order to provide you with these examples, I will demonstrate how to use chat GPT today. In order to do that, I have to open my SQL Server Management Studio first. In case you are a newcomer to this series, I would like to remind you that I have already installed SQL Server Express Edition on my system. Additionally, I have installed SQL Server Management Studio on my computer. You can see in the first video of the series Learn SQL, all of these instructions are available for your convenience. I have created a database by right clicking on new database, which I named Learn SQL. Currently, I have configured SQL Server with Windows authentication. This authentication method utilizes Windows credentials. By initial database, the Learn SQL was created in the beginning of the series. And a few minutes ago, I right clicked and selected new query so I can run queries on this database. However, I won't manually write today's script as I promised. 
Instead, I'm going to retrieve it from ChatGPT. Let me open and access ChatGPT to ask a question. I request ChatPT to give me create table script for SQL server with identity column and few examples of insert statement. The script has been provided to me by ChatGPT and I will copy it and try it out on SQL Server Management Studio. In doing so, I'm also teaching you about prompt engineering. Let's break down the code. We start by creating a table. So the syntax is create table table name. Inside the parentheses, we define the columns with their respective data types. For instance, we have a column named ID with the identity property set to start at one and increment by one. This means the first ID would be one and later on each ID will increment by one. This column also serves as the primary key. Additionally, there are three other columns. First name with the data type of varchar 50. Last name with the same data type of varchar 50. And email with the data type of varchar 100. The script also includes example insert statements, which I will modify a little bit. The current given insert is, let me change the name to Amit and the last name to Kumar. Same way, let me change the name in second insert to Anil and the last name is Yadav. Let go ahead and change email id too and then we can insert this data into the table. Now if you notice in these insert statements, insert into example table id, first name, last name, email. There is no identity insert or id column insert. When we insert data, there is no need to include the identity column. The reason for this is that the identity column automatically increments. So we only need to insert the first name, last name and email fields. Let's proceed and execute this. We will first execute the create statement. To execute, we have an option on the toolbar that let me use that. Table is created. Now, let me run the insert statement. One row is inserted. Before moving forward, let's retrieve the record from the example table using the select star from example table. Now, I'll insert more data. Let me run both of these inserts. Insertion of data is done. Let me query this table again. There are now three rows. To explain to you the behavior of the identity column, let me duplicate this script with another table name. Let me duplicate this script to create another table named example1. I will replace example with example1 throughout the script and then execute these scripts. I will add the select for both tables together to show you data from both the tables together. SSMS allows you to do that. Let me create the table first. The table is created. Insert the first row. One row is inserted. Let me run both insert statements together now. Two rows are inserted. Now let us select the data from both tables. You can see that the identity columns have unique values. These values are unique to a table. Mean identities can repeat across tables. As you can see, both tables have the same identities. Now I would like to use the unique identifier to generate the primary key. So let me ask ChatGPT to provide the script. This time, I'll go to chat pt and request. Give me a create statement with the primary key using a unique identifier. And let me write down in between the SQL server an example of insert statement. Give me create table script for SQL server with identity column and few examples of insert statement. Chat GPT is working on it and generating the script. But this script does not default the ID column with a new ID. Instead, it is used in the insert statement but I would like to default the ID column using new ID function. Let me give another prompt to chat GPT. Can you default using new ID function? Now we have another set of SQL statements. Let us run this on SQL Server Management Studio. In these statements, I would like to replace the two statements with the statement above where we have changed the names. Let me rename all the table name. We will create this table. Let's understand the create table statement example table 2 it has a column named id of data type unique identifier defaulted with new id and set as the primary key this is what we are trying to accomplish this is something we need to check as we're not sure whether it will work we add other column first name data type is varchar last name data type is varchar and email as data type is varchar same as what we had in the previous example let's create the table and insert the data table is created. One row is inserted. You can see the unique identifier has been defaulted. Let's insert the remaining two statements together. Select them and execute. 
you can see three different unique identifiers have been assigned to this table. Now it's time to replicate this process with a new table and compare both of them together. So we'll call this new table example 3. I will remove the select from the middle so I can run it as a single script. I will also write a select statements to check the data of tables 3 and 2 together. The script is executed successfully. If you look very carefully, these unique identifiers are not the same. They are globally unique. So if you need IDs that are unique globally, you can use the new ID function, which means the GUID or UUID. In this, even if I combine these two tables or perform a union operation, I will still have different unique identifiers in the combined table. In this video, you've learned how to create a primary key column in SQL Server and how to default to the primary key column using either the identity or unique identifier. Well, you can use the new ID function. I hope you like this video. Let me know what else you want me to cover in this series. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you.